Hey everyone, hope you're doing well. I'm Matt. Um, what I wanted to do here was to strip away the noise, pun absolutely intended, and look at what the audio itself actually tells us. In this video, we're going to look at TDOA or time difference of arrival and how it can be used to create several different kinds of measurements. I realized the last few videos were a bit dry and perhaps left some room for speculation, but their main point was to identify which services reflected the audio back to the microphones. Now we know that we can parallel that information uh, across multiple reflections and start to build real world audio ge geometry. A kind of acoustic map that shows how the sound behaved in the space. In this episode, I will be using that same process to estimate as best I can uh, the possible positions of the shooter using only the audio and the time difference between microphones. One quick disclaimer before we start, I'm not saying the shooter is where I suggest. I'm showing the test results from one data set. To confirm anything, we will need to repeat this across multiple mic pairs and see if the results overlap. That's how you verify an audio hypothesis properly. All right, let's start with what we can see. This is the audio from two microphones of the same event. I've clipped out the sections we're interested in. It is the front right 45 meter microphone and the back left 40 meter microphone. If we zoom right in, we can see the transient of this one starts here and the transient of this one actually starts here. Um, all we've got to do is hover over this highlighted section or the other one and we can see in the bottom left just under my EQ here the duration is 7 milliseconds. 7 milliseconds might not sound like much but that's exactly what time difference of arrival is. The amount of time it takes uh, for the same sound to reach two different points. So this tiny gap um, you're looking at right here is the key to the whole process. In the next step, we will turn that time gap into distance using the speed of sound, and then we can start plotting geometry from there. Now let's move on to the boring stuff that will make you feel like you should have listened at school. Down the bottom, we have the equation that I am using to work all of this out. And essentially, it all boils back down to a rather simple principle that if you want to work out the time, um, then you need to divide the displacement or difference in distance with the velocity. If you want to work out the velocity, you need to divide the, the distance by the time. And if you want to uh, work out the distance, you need to multiply, that's what that dot means, the velocity by the time. So it's a little working triangle that essentially is something that you was probably taught in year 10 of school if you're in the UK. I don't know what that is in America, but you kind of get the point. And the equation itself isn't too drastic once you understand what it means. D, the d sorry, the D, uh, the triangle is delta. Um, it's the old Greek symbol delta, um, and that it stands for the change of, or the change in. So the change in time times the velocity, which is the speed of sound, which will give us the change in the distance. Yeah, and that's as far as we're getting with this equation so far. Um, the next one is the change in distance divided by length. It gives you your sine, and then you can use the arc sine symbol on your calculator to give you the angle. So you can you can convert this both into angles, and you can convert this into distance. I hope that makes sense. So let's perform the maths real quick. It's not too dramatic. So we have a seven millisecond time step, uh, time frame. We need to multiply that by the speed of sound on the day, which was 349 meters per second. And that will give us our result. So let's pull up a calculator and we'll quickly just whiz it up so uh seven milliseconds div divided multiplied by 349 equals 2.443 so we have 2.44 meters um and that is the difference in distance between the two mics with the recorded sound I hope you're with me still. Okay, 
so here we have the map of the area and the positions of the microphones were within a couple of meters of where they were recorded from um, what I have done with this is I'm, try, I'm going to try and use real world geometry based on the scale of the map um, the point here is is to create um, the diff the the point here is, is the difference in the offset between the left and the right microphone, essentially. So this microphone here and this microphone over here. We will draw a line between both of them um, and then we will use that line to create our axes across the whole area to represent the real world um, size of the hyperbolas we're going to create. Okay, so as you can see, I've done that line. I've created the axes to create the geometry of the area. Um, that's the line we're going to work off. There are the labels, dot markers. Okay, so the dot markers, can't really see them from here, but these are placed at 2.44 meters. I started at 2.5 meters and then shrunk them down to fit the amount that's supposed to exist from there to there which is 28 um, this is giving us our points that we are going to use to draw the hyperbola um, and what I kind of realized after I did it is I did it all backwards but it doesn't matter because we are me we are measuring reflections so first things first we need to connect from down here which is where I'd put point zero or zero point whatever because we're again we're working on the real world size so the point comes down here which is exactly the same distance from there we will then create our arc of yellow lines um, to each point to the zero point now what happens here is is we have a crossover on each one of these yellow lines that one's not really relevant that one that one you can see I put a little red dot next to them um, this is just to help me be able to see them when I come put the rectangles in um, and then from here we have to draw our arc which is essentially the hyperbola itself so we put the square in now as I said the right angle is the point of the hyperbola that we're going to draw um, and the mistake I made was I actually did the inversion of that hyperbola um, by mistake but because we're talking reflection law that the actual uh, hyperbola that I was trying to measure was the reflection arc so I could work out the source arc afterwards but I did it the wrong way round so if we put in the inverted uh, hyperbola in the here we have our reflection arc now this is every point that the sound could have been reflected from to hit that microphone and that microphone to create that offset that we measured yeah you with me <laughs> i know it's a little bit uh science teacher but the opposite of reflection is the source so essentially what we've done here is created a source line now the shot must have been fired from somewhere along this line based on the geometry of the sound you, again it's what uh, reflection law is what comes in at whatever angle has to be reflected out at that angle so um, as an inverse flip you can see that this is the point of origin now I can't sit there and say that the this exactly was the point of origin over here I can't say it was back here and I can't say it was over here but what I can do is I can reflect the ray so if we put the sound ray to the um, reflection arc we can measure the angle um, as an equal in equal out and the line should point to where the shooter was this is where we get to um, we can put the protractor in you can have a look and measure that if you must but it's pretty equal 
Uh, again, I'm only interested in the numbers. I'm not interested in the politics of the situation right this second. So we can clearly see that the reflection ray, when measured against the um, angle of reflection or the arc of reflection, um, it clearly lines up with the point of origin at a specific location. So we could quite confidently say to get the geometry of the sound, the shooter must have been in this position. But this is just one test, okay? This is not like the be all and end all, absolutely conclusive proof. But I do have complete conclusive proof of which way the sound was, was traveling across the yard which I will get to in another video. I might, I'm gonna probably actually, I'm on sound, uh, crowdsource the truth with Jason on Thursday. I will probably drop that nugget in there. Um, but so far test one is showing pretty conclusively that the shooter most likely to have been on there using the laws of physics and audio geometry. All right, so that's our first proper run through of the process. A bit of physics, bit of maths. Now we've got a working distance and difference to build from. Obviously, this is a little bit on the scientific side. That's unavoidable. Um, and a little bit of maths, I suppose. Was it algebra, geometry? I'm not really sure, whatever. But it's the backbone of how we test these kind of claims properly. The quick maths I just run through, we need proper verification. And the same goes for the geometry. Um, the TDOA measurement on its own can show a possible path, but it doesn't give us a pinpoint. I think John Cullen said... You can place it there, but you can't place it there. I think it was pretty spot on with that. Well, we need a multiple reference pairs, uh, multiple hyperbolas, and where those start to overlap, that's when the data starts to get interesting. I've actually got a list here that I put together last night of all the different hyperbolas, phase cancellation, stereo, all sorts of stuff we can, we can use um, and measure just off of these recordings which will build us a pretty detailed map, to be fair, using how the sound could only present that way um, if certain requirements are met. Uh, in the next video, I'll start working through uh, that list, um, I suppose. I think actually next, next video, I'm going to do the impact to bang and the distance that I get off of that because I've got a lot of confusion over crack bang analysis to impact to bang analysis. They're both on the opposite end of the scale, so there is a difference there. Uh, but we'll get to that in the next video before I give you a conclusion on my my findings shall we say it's not really my opinion it's just what the mass and geometry suggest and state you know so anyway drop a comment if you've got a question if you've got a challenge go for it um i'm open to be challenged i want to be challenged i want to be uh, i want this to be robust i want people to get involved and measure for themselves if they get different measurements we can all agree on those measurements and we can build an accurate picture based on that information um, i'm not acting as a gatekeeper here i'm providing you with the tools to do it for that reason um that's it i think um i'll catch you up on i'll catch you up i'll catch up with you on the next one